Bullet Writer friends, I'm Scott the Overwhelmed Author and today I want to talk to you about how to write better fiction. So if you're like me, you're on this never-ending quest to write better, write better fiction. And if you're a fiction writer. And um, you know, that's probably why you're watching this video. We watch YouTube videos, we read books on storycraft, we read blogs, and we watch TED Talks, and might I recommend Andrew Stanton's Clues to a Good Story. Pixar knows a thing or two about writing good stories. You know, you might learn a thing or two listening to that particular TED Talk. I will actually link that TED Talk in the notes section or the comments. Whatever. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out five ideas, things for you to think about while you're writing. A lot of times when we're writing, we get so, what I like to call, stuck in the muck that sometimes we can't see the forest through the trees. We get into the mechanics of the story, we're deep in there, we're up to our elbows, and um, sometimes we kind of forget about the basics. These are ideas things that I've always kept in mind. Personally, when I'm writing, they, they lay a good foundation for your story. I have also seen these particular ideas um, consistently talked about from professional writers as well. Uh, but a word of advice when it comes to writing advice, and that is always take it with a grain of salt. These are tools, and you don't use every single tool that you have when you do a specific job. So, you know, nine times out of 10, when you're working on a car, you're probably not gonna use a hammer. Um, you might, but in most cases, there are other tools that are gonna work when you're working on a car. These are things to think about. Um, this is by no means a complete list, and I would like to do a part two somewhere down the road that gets a little more specific. Uh, these are sort of general ideas, but these are good things to think about while you're writing. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number one, have something to say. Don't just push plot. You know, maybe you've heard that characters are story, and that's because most good characters have something to say. Maybe you're saying, well, dude, I'm just writing a gritty fantasy novel. Well, maybe you're trying to say something like violence begets violence. Or maybe you're like, excuse me, well, I'm just writing a nice little romance novel. Well, maybe you're saying something like, you know, uh, you find love in the most unexpected of places. I think the point here is that you don't have to have some kind of overly complex, morally sound high ground that you're preaching from when I'm saying that you ha your characters have something to say or you have something to say with your story. It can be a simple idea, but just have something to say. Here's a way to think of it. At the beginning of your story, you're asking a question, is this thing that my main character believes true? And I would hope by the end of your story, you would have answered that question. Like, true love conquers all, but does it really? You want to answer that question by the end. You're making a promise to your reader you're putting this, this question out there that's sort of like this is your theme. And you're saying to your reader, you're making this promise that if you read the story, by the time you get to the end, I'm going to let you know whether or not this is true and, you know, in the context of this character's world. Number two, conflict. Every scene should have some type of conflict. Now, it doesn't have to be a knockdown, drag out fight or a war, but there should be some kind of disagreement or um, there, there should be opposing agendas in, in every scene. Um, even if it's something minor, like it's a long car trip and the person driving doesn't want to stop, but one of the passengers has to pee. I mean, 
that's minor, but you need some type of, as I said, opposing agenda going on in a story. Because I will tell you, a scene where everybody is agreeing is one boring ass scene, guaranteed. Number three, never and then. Um, you never want your story to be more or less just a situation. Um, you don't want it to be just a series of events. You don't want it to be Nancy went to the office and then she got a phone call and then she left the office and then, and then what the hell? A very talented writer might be able to make that interesting but it's going to be impossible to make that a satisfying story or to make that a story that's going to resonate with your audience. You want there to be sort of this cause and effect thing going on that links your stories together, or excuse me, your scenes together. Otherwise, it'll feel very disconnected and your reader will never feel invested in the story. They're never gonna really become immersed in the story. And it's gonna feel very obvious that they're just being pushed through from one place to another. There has to feel like there's some kind of purpose or, or some kind of reason why they're going to the next scene. Instead, why not follow the but therefore model? Um, there's actually a really good um, explanation and it's probably done a little more eloquently by Trey Parker and Matt Stone from South Park. There's a video, um, I'll find that, I know there's a link to that uh, or that I can put into the description section as well that you can do. It's, it's actually a very short video where they talk about how they set up an episode of South Park in the writer's room. And it's a really good explanation. But just to kind of give you my take on it, um, here's the idea. And the idea is that you're talking about situation, scenes, and why you're going to the next scene. So there's purpose, and this is why this is important. So you don't feel like you're just disconnected, floating through space, being pushed from one scene to the next. So the idea here is something like, when using the but therefore, is uh, Dave goes out for a night on the town, but his car gets stolen with its phone in it. Therefore, he needs to borrow someone's cell phone to call his fiance to come pick him up. But when he calls his fiance, she doesn't answer her phone. Therefore, he needs to find a way to get in contact with his brother-in-law that lives across town. It's a very simple story that I'm telling there, but each scene has a purpose. You know why we're going from one situation to the next, from each scene to the next. You want to connect your scenes, and that's going to help you connect with your audience, because it's going to make sense in their head. Because once they start wondering, why am I going here? Why am I going to this next place? What's the purpose? Once they start wondering, why am I going here? You're, you're dead in the water because then the, they're out of the story. You want them to be like, oh, this is why we're going here. Number four, avoid good coincidences. In the words of Pixar, you get one coincidence and that should probably be your hook. Um, the idea here is a coincidence is going to come across as cheating, especially if it's helping your protagonist. So a good coincidence is going to come across as kind of lame. Now, a bad coincidence will help raise the stakes and make things more complicated. And we like that as an audience. We like it when things get more difficult because it's going to make the ending when your protagonist eventually, in most cases, overcomes those obstacles, it's going to make the story much more satisfying. Number five, active protagonist. Okay, this is sort of a non-negotiable here. You need to have an active protagonist. You can't just drag your protagonist through the story. Your protagonist should be making choices that impact the story. If you're breaking your story down into acts, different acts, then 
Your protagonist should be making one important decision per act, minimum. And the final act of your story, your protagonist should be making a decision, an important decision in that final act because that's where we're going to see your character growth. That's where we're seeing that this character has changed. Because if your character hasn't changed, then your story is not going to be, it's going to be kind of boring. It's going to be kind of lame. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to say, well, this story, some story out there, the character doesn't change. I'm sure there are stories out there where the character doesn't change. Uh, you know, I, I can probably think of a couple if I had a few minutes to think about it. But I'm flying by the seat of my pants here. I'm, I'm pantsing when it comes to doing this particular video. But honestly, it takes a damn, damn talented writer to pull that off. And even some of the best probably couldn't do it. So. You know, if you feel strongly about it and you feel like you can do it, go ahead and do it. I'm not here to tell anybody that you can't do something. If you have a lifelong passion to write a story about a character that doesn't change throughout the story, do it. I'm not here to tell anybody not to do it. But I can tell you, that you have a better chance of making a compelling and interesting story if your character is making active choices, if your protagonist is an active protagonist. Um, think about this. Uh, let me use an example of, okay, I'm gonna give a spoiler for a book that's been out since the 80s. If, if you've ever read Pet Cemetery, Lewis Creed, um, a big point in the book, uh, he digs up his son, um, from, his son's dead. And he, he's going to dig his, his son up and he's going to bury him in the pet cemetery. Sorry for the spoiler for a book that's like 30 years old. What if his wife was the one that decided she was going to dig up the son and she just decides to call, you know, her husband up and, you know, well, back then it would have been probably been a pay phone or a big brick phone and said, hey, um, you need to come out here and, uh, and, and help me. I've dug up our son already. That would have been an incredibly lame moment because Lewis Creed is the main character of that story and if he had just let his wife do that that would have been like so lame um or what about Harry Potter what if uh what if Ron and Hermione were like just like dragging him around you know and they were the ones that were uh you know basically like taking on uh um the uh, Voldemort. I mean, that would have been. Or, or how about this? How about the, here's an example from a movie. Uh, what if Luke was a passenger in the Millennium Falcon uh, during the Death Star trench run? Boy, that would have sucked. So you need to have an active protagonist. I just something I truly believe. But hey, more power to you if, if you think you can write something compelling where they're not active. Then more. Hey, look, I'm not here to tell you not to do that. If that's your dream, my friend, go out there, write your story about the passive protagonist. So anyway, I am going to do a second part to this. So hopefully you've taken something from these five ideas that I've given you, things to think about while you're writing to hopefully make your fiction writing better. And if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the comments. If you have any comments, that's great. If you disagree with what I've said, feel free, free to, to disagree in the comments. Really put anything in the comments. I'm, I'm fine with it. And uh, I will work on a part two to this that's a little more advanced. These ideas are sort of more on the, um, the, the general side. And uh, I feel like these are the, the, the but these are the big ones, the, the, the takeaways that I think are, are sort of essential. And that's my story for today. So keep writing and keep sharing your stories. And I will see you in the next video.